All right, I know it's, it's four point. o'clock, but that is not a Commander Shepard word. <laughs> Uh, We have a little treat for you as we are going to talk about our favorite things in Mass Effect as fans and also courtesy (laughs) of Damn Jazzy Hands, we have a lovely video to greet you with. Sit back and enjoy the show. (laughs) to talking about something other than business. Maybe later. No, oh, no! I was sitting in front of his nipple Thank the whole time! I'm so sorry! Shit! Yeah, there it is. There's the angle. Like my head was right. I want to kick the leapers straight to hell. Caden is as boring as a sack of mayonnaise, but when he had his shirt off at the hospital, it wasn't hard to look at. It'd be more fun than playing Edie. Ha <laughs> ha! doesn't sweat. No, I'll bet she does. You sweat playing chess. Depends on how much fun we're having. Game night, Samantha Train. Commander, thanks for taking the time to speak with the civilian. I'd love to see how Commander Shepard kills times between missions. Why don't you give me a call if you'd like to grab drinks in your cabin? I promise a night of fun and games. Trainer. Okay. Vid's Joker gave me, well, they never got this far. Shocker. There was the part about sleeping together, but this is, I know. Kiss him! Kiss him! Shut him up and kiss him! When you've got me. (gasps) 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 Oh, yes, dip me. I'm Garrus Vicarian, codename Archangel. All-round Turian bad boy and dispenser of justice in an unjust galaxy. All right, that's pretty hot. Now you're getting it. I sure as fuck am. Dance it out. So, tell me, think a girl would fall for that? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, hell yes. I see you've been putting that reach and flexibility to good use. Uh Uh-uh. You know it. And it gets even better when you try it in bed. There's more to it than that, isn't there? What's really bothering you? I got the hots for James. I don't... I didn't really, I mean, it's like now is such an inappropriate time to talk about. That is not what you were picking up on. Everyone back on Earth? I got this one. Oh, fuck yeah, James. Oh, that's so hot. I. James, you're hot and you have good taste in shitty vehicles. Let's talk. Such a tease, Vega. Who, me? You ever gonna make yes. all this flirting? Yes! You! Uh, holy shit, James. How dare you be so casually sexy? God damn it. Brooke, she's kind of cute. Think she's on the market? Bite me. Shepard, please. You've been holding out on me. Get sweaty. What? Come on in closer. Don't be shy. <laughs> yeah. Don't be shy. Oh, I'm sorry. You weren't talking to... I'm so sorry. I thought you were talking to me. That it broke the stream is is the end of that. Uh, <laughs> it was the scene where, Vega sh- where James is shirtless and I sort of 
was surprised and flew backwards and unplugged my computer from the internet. <laughs> it's fine. And if you would like more of this, you should follow Jazzy. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not like Mass Effect. Well, maybe I will play Mass Effect again. <laughs> After this, you have to. <laughs> but welcome. Thank you all so much. It is making my heart so full to see the room so full of people and all of us in our N7 gear. And I'm trying yeah, yeah, not yeah. to get super emotional, but I was like, let's just su submit this panel and see what happens. And oh my God, we're here and we're streaming. So hello, everyone at home. So for those of you that showed up, that's what this panel is about. We're going to be silly. We're going to be fun. We're going to talk about our thirst, our favorite shepherds, and talk about our shepherds in a little detail, what we love about the series, and what we hope for the next game that has been relentlessly teased <laughs> with that one shot of whatever is being built in space. Um, but housekeeping, we will have time for Q&A, hopefully. This is not call and response. I know we're all nerds. I know we like to yell from the audience. Don't. <laughs> Imagine Aveline from the other Bioware game that I like a lot with a sign that says stop. <laughs> oh. That was not a joke. I was not saying call and response as a joke. Um, so Q is for question. It is not interrogative. We do not need your specter status recognized to ask us a question. And when we do say come to the mic, have a question, I will ask you to go find one. That said, everyone will get to introduce themselves. I will go last. So we're going to go in order from down here, and then I will actually go last. So Mandy, who are you? Hi, everyone. Uh, there's going to be a lot of talk of thirst tonight, so <laughs> fair warning. Uh, but hi, I'm Mandy. I'm Lady Luck 34, a variety streamer, and lots. we have a lot to say about Mass Effect. <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, everybody. My name is Shana Moon. I'm a producer in the video games industry, I've worked on God of War and God of War Ragnarok. Uh, and I'm just here for like a really grounded talk about mechanics. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, what? The, the mechanics of thirst? I brought a spreadsheet. Okay. I didn't know if... No. Okay. I'll tell you all about the mechanics of Garrus and Shepard in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Eugenio. I'm DM Jazzy Heads from the video. Uh, and that was, that was my patient Shepard. So name, well, I guess we'll get to this, so I, I'll tell you why she's named that later. Hi, everybody. My name's Jacob Rausch. I go by Daspiff Online, moderator, streamer. Uh, and I'm your moderator, Commander uh, Fenner Shepard, who you'll see later. Yes, I'm a big Bioware nerd, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> and again, this is going to be fun. It's going to be silly. We're not going to be 100% serious. So I hope everyone's ready, has your water, what your libation of choice. And uh, we're going to talk about why Mass Effect, because clearly all of us like it in this room. So answer, what drew you to Mass Effect? Whoever wants to start. So I played Knights of the Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2. Thank you. I, I'm very brave. <laughs> <laughs> and... I think I was like pretty young when it was like, oh, they're doing the Old Republic, they're not doing Coder 3, and I was like, ah, oh, that sucks. But then I discovered, I basically like learned what the concept of a game company was, and I was like, oh, they make other stuff that's not Star Wars? Crazy. Uh, so I picked up Mass Effect, it was the first rated M game I ever bought. I went and bought it on my 17th birthday uh, and got into a car accident because of snow. Uh, oh, but I no. still went and got the game. You know, so. Uh, I came at it sort of from the other end. I didn't really know anything about the series until the Legendary Edition was announced. Um, and then actually many of these fine folks <laughs> uh, loved it so much and were talking about it and excited about it. I was in the process of playing through uh, the Dragon Age trilogy on stream uh, when it got announced. And I thought, well, I'm almost done with this long franchise and I don't like having to pick games for stream. So I guess we'll do that next because that's another three long games. Uh, turned into four, I did Andromeda as well, and just absolutely fell in love with uh, everything about it. Yeah, kind of the same. My roommate talked about the series a lot, and then some streamers that I watch <laughs> uh, were playing it, and it looked like fun, and got into it, got sucked in, loved the universe, loved the choices. And I came in like somewhere in between where I didn't s start playing when Mass Effect 1 came out, but I loved the idea of this 
epic journey in space. And so during this Mass, Mass Effect 2 time, I was like, oh, okay, I'll play Mass Effect 1. It's really hard to go back to some of the older games, especially Mass Effect 1 <laughs> and the <laughs> elevator. I, but the Mako. But no. the Mako. No. <laughs> I will fight you. I will lose, but I will. <laughs> But in, and then playing through all of them and especially wanting to be ready so that by the time Mass Effect 3 was out, I was like, all right, I'm ready for this. And yes, but going back to Mass Effect 1, if you weren't there at the beginning, was a little rough. <laughs> Legendary Edition made it so much easier. Yeah, yeah. So my Mass Effect origin's kind of hilarious. It's actually N.K. Jemisin's fault. Sure. No, she was telling me about Garrus, an archangel, and that, and she sent me some gifts, and she was like, no, you have to play this, because you know how much I like Dragon Age, and so I, I was already deep in those waters, and she's like, no, 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 play Mass Effect, and now I'm here giving a panel on how much I love Mass Effect. <laughs> I played the first trilogy several times, replaying Legendary, and I played Andromeda, and I'm sorry, but Garrus, but also <laughs> Trainer, and also Liara, and Jack. Wow, no one said Jack. Oh, sure. Yeah. Wow, no Jack love. <laughs> you got a few. <laughs> Thank you. I feel valid now. Um, Can I? Of course. Uh, okay, so this is not call and response. I just want to keep it to hands, but I'm curious. Would you raise your hand if you have finished the core trilogy at least once? Great. Put your hands d uh, put your hands down and raise them if you finished it at least twice. Uh huh. That's about what I thought. Okay, three times. Holy crap. I was going to stop at three, but all right, four, let's go. More okay, to... closer, five and more. Okay, all right, awesome, great. Just checking, wow. I love it. That was mostly I... for my curiosity, sorry. I love, I love the commitment, though. Yeah. Uh, this will probably be a lot of what we talk about, besides talking about our individual shepherds. What kind of community have you all found? Because clearly there is one. <laughs> But you know, what has brought you either together with friends or online communities, or especially in the last three years when we've all been stuck at home, how has Mass Effect as a franchise, as a game, characters that we love, what has that brought to you in terms of community, friendship, et cetera? There's such a language of the game that I didn't ever even notice until I understood it. So, you know, references like my favorite X on the Y, right? Uh, I now understand that, and I now that's something that I can talk about with a stranger, right? If I hear them make that joke, I'm like, oh, you played Mass Effect. Great, let's talk about how silly that gag was, right? So there's this whole, like, it's not exactly meme culture, right? But it's, it's lines and, and bits and things that, for most of the people in this room, I would imagine, are just sort of part of your, like, pop culture lexicon. But it's, it's amazing to me, now that I have played through the games several times and, you know, whatever, whatever, how much I notice that that stuff is out there and what a real, like, clarion call is for folks who know what it is, right? To be like, oh, you're, you're my people. Okay, cool. Making calibrations. What's that? Are oh. you calibrating? <laughs> yes. I mean, going off of that, a friend of ours, Space Valkyries, mentioned that she's been watching Star Trek and was shocked to see how much of it looked similar yeah. to Mass Effect, because Mass Effect obviously pulled from those sci-fi tropes, so it goes even further back than that. That's true, that's true, yeah. And I feel like people have very strong feelings about the cast of characters, including who you romanced, who you had in your squad, and then the decisions you made as it related to those characters as you played through the story. Uh -huh. And there's so many variations of how that can go based on your dialogue and how you chose to play the game mm -hmm. that there's always something to talk about based on what you felt strongly on with it. Yeah. yeah, like the two of us were just sitting here before this started and we kind of had totally different choices and it was interesting. I, Basically, whenever like people who do game narrative get together, mm. it's kind of like a countdown to when a Bioware RPG is gonna come up. <laughs> yes. I, at times, have had like a physical jar to put quarters in. <laughs> That's, that sounds like a joke that's not a no, joke. No, no, I believe no. you. <laughs> Wait, I believe you. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, have, I have been to like narrative conversations where it's like, okay, we're gonna talk about game narrative, Let's not talk about the Bioware RPGs because we all know we've all played them. Mm -hmm. it, it is that like foundational thing. And I'm sure that for a lot of people, this was like the first game that you played that had romance in it. Yeah. 
Like, that's really important. Yeah. Quick um, hands up. Was a, was a Mass Effect game your first game where you ha were able to romance someone? Oh, that's interesting. That's a good question. Whoa. Okay. Oh, that's a fair number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, and that's what I love about Mass Effect because it, it does present, at, like, if you go back and look at the first trailer for Mass Effect, it presents as this sort of, like, space adventure gun serious guy. But, like, the, I think the heart and soul of why this game has been so, like, has so much longevity with a community is because of the character relationships, not even yeah. romance specifically. Yeah. But, like, these are real characters that we can talk about, and it's, like, real beliefs that people have that we can talk about. And it's the, I mean, this is maybe obvious for a lot of us, right? But it's the consistency throughout the franchise that yes. makes them so special, right? Dragon Age series also has great narratives and romances and interesting characters, right? But when you lose them, most of them, between games, you don't get that full richness, which I was not, is, is one of the things that I always talk about first when I'm trying to, to uh, bring someone into the fold, right? Is, is how special it is to stick with your shepherd for three games and for many of those NPCs to stick with you and what an opportunity that is, not only for really rich and full character storylines, but also as you all said, right, like all these different choices with these individuals that you can still talk with people about, right? It isn't like you have to think, oh, now wait, who was Liara from the first game and this and that, right? You know who I'm talking about, but if along the trilogy we've made different choices, those two Liaras might be very different, but it's very easy to connect to Liara, right? Because she's in all the games. I mean, in Mass Effect 1, when you, uh, on Vermeer, if you make certain choices, then in Mass Effect 3, Captain Kirami, he hold the line, will, uh, will appear. And you'll be like, oh, great, I know this guy. And it's yeah. just so rewarding that my choices brought this character to the scene. And to, the other thing, too, is when you think about the, the through line through all three games, is these were happening over the course of years in development, which means that we as people were also evolving. So like when we were spoke, speaking about it beforehand, one of the things was in Mass Effect 1, I was like ride or die for Tali. And then <laughs> as I was going into the other games, I had very strong, very strong feelings about like, oh, Legion, you can do it. Like you can become sentient and be more. <laughs> and that had like such an impact for then the decisions I made mm -hmm. and the do you want to tell the people what you did? <laughs> the terrible, terrible thing you did? Hold on, hold on, no shaming. <laughs> Not until after she says it anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> preface for this, y'all, is that uh, it was really, I think, for me in Mass Effect 3 when I felt the, the strength of that you're going to make a decision and it's going to have a significant impact. When you're playing through the earlier games, it oftentimes is like, oh, you know, it's really important that you go help this colony for something, but there was never a time limit. So you could do all the things and there wasn't really a negative repercussion. And I uh, played my first playthrough the way I would as a person in terms of my choices. So sometimes I was choosing Paragon and sometimes I was choosing Renegade. And then the downside of that is you end up right in the middle and you don't have the dialogue choices for either. <laughs> So I got to the decision in Mass Effect 3 with Legion and Tali, and I was like, but you can be more, the Geth can be more, and I didn't know what was about to happen. Oh. Yes. And then I had this moment of that sequence plays out, mm. because I chose Legion and the Geth, and then I'm, I'm just like, aghast, sitting there going like, oh no. Did I save before this? Can I go back or do I need to commit? <laughs> and just, I've made this choice. Okay, I'm gonna just keep going. But that's another thing about this game and the community of it, right? Like we all, we're all being very careful about spoilers for a room full of people who have played Mass Effect five times, but okay. <laughs> I, um, I think we're okay. <laughs> But, but, we, but right, as, as uh, spoiler-free as that largely was, right, we all knew what you meant. And it, that's such a, again, it's back to the, right, it's back to that common language that I think is such, a, such an amazing thing about this franchise, more than so many others, right? Even big, famous franchises, right? I don't, I don't really, unless I'm talking about, like, I don't know, breaking pots or something, I don't really go around, like, quoting anything from the Zelda series, right? Long-running, lots of games, very famous, but it's a different kind of fandom than Mass Effect, and, and that is exactly the kind of thing that I love about it, right? We don't have to say all the words that we mean, because we know. If you don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, go finish the game. 
Okay, so just for my own curiosity, is there anyone in this room who has not finished the Mass Effect trilogy? Oh, oh, oh no! no! I'm so sorry! <laughs> well, I'm sorry to tell you, you will we'll, probably get some spoilers. We'll, we'll try and preface them. Uh, we, will, we will try to be as ob obsequious as possible. <laughs> Uh, for me, I've actually got a group of friends, and our Friday night thing was to play Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. And it was a sad, sad day when I could not load it anymore on my Xbox. <laughs> no, seriously, I was like, there is no God. Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that core group of friends where it wasn't just running around, because at a certain point, you learn the maps, you learn everything. And it was, it was our chance to catch up and be social. And also, and I told, I've told this story before, I'm sure on panels, and some of you may laugh at it, but when I first started playing, I kind of live blogged my playthrough on Tumblr, and I'm sure you can guess where this might go. I had some, I talked about a character that acts as if you've romanced him, even if you've never romanced him, if you're a femship, and the creepy way in which he acts like you have betrayed him, like Judas. And it was just like, <laughs> sorry. See, that's why I love this kid. Mm -hmm. And But it was like my, oh my God, this is so creepy. I hate this. Why? Why are you like this? And someone on Tumblr, and I, remember, I will never forget this with my Swiss cheese memory. Their name, their username was Mrs. Caden Alenko. <laughs> and they wrote a reply to me that was three times as long as my post. <laughs> and told me I was hurting Caden's feelings. And I was like, first off, he's a bunch of pixels. I need you to go outside. <laughs> but it is also that same passion for the series and these characters that unites a lot of us. Like if I just see someone at N7 hoodie, I give them the head nod. Like I do when I see other brown folks out and about. So just, I was so excited to see everyone out there with all of our hoodies and t-shirts and everything else. Well done, y'all. <laughs> uh, before I start getting like emotional and cry about my shepherd, we're going to talk about our shepherds and then what we kind of want from the next game and then Q&A. And it can be silly or fun as you like. So in honor of opening with your sure. video. <laughs> uh, so Patient Shepherd was so named because the day that the Legendary Edition came out was my Twitch affiliate stream anniversary, and I was like, amazing. I'm gonna play it all day, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be so fun, and then nine hours later, it finished downloading and installing. <laughs> so uh, I was live at some point just to like tell my community, like, hey, it's still downloading. I actually have to get off now so that I can have more bandwidth to, to download, um, but I kept putting out like, okay, well, right, this percentage will be ready to stream soon. Uh, so we finally, during character creation, which I usually do sort of as a group project in the channel, uh, we were like, patience feels correct, because otherwise I'll cry. Um, so patience, if, oh, I have to think all the way back to the first game, but I believe she was, um, her parents had joined uh, uh, the alliance, which makes her background, oh, spacer, nope, spacer, thank you. See, I knew you all would know. Um, and she, I don't know what to say about her. I mean, I can tell you all the decisions that she made, but she was always a little, I played her, which I can blame a little bit on chat because they get to make some decisions when I play dialogue-based RPGs like this. Um, but she was very much like, she start, actually, the first game, she started out maybe going renegade and then my poor heart couldn't take it. But she was like a badass who took no shit and um, cared a whole ton about whoever she was romancing in, the sec in that moment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't, know. I don't know what else to say about her, no. but... Watching oh. It helps when you leave your mic on. <laughs> um, watching patients go through her three games was a whole emotional journey. Oh, it sure was. Uh, next up is Shayna. Oh, I like that hair, Shayna. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's... Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It, Unreal Engine and hair, uh, it used to not be. <laughs> <laughs> Much not? better now. Um, yeah, so when I'm playing my shepherds in Mass Effect, I am concocting a whole other narrative in my head. Um, I am thinking about the fact, like th this shepherd is specifically Earthborn, she's renegade. I've written fan fiction about her doing like petty crimes. <laughs> like, I, oh, yeah. I, 
And that stuff was like so important to me. And I, she ba basically renegade in all of the like conversational choices, but paragon for all the like big decisions. Like I cannot sabotage the genophage cure, the genophage cure. Oh, sure. I, I have to cure it. It is, it is so emotional for me, that whole sequence, how it plays out. So uh, paragon, but renegade when you talk to her, I guess. <laughs> and romance scarus, of course. Gosford, you're up next. So I decided that Tally was mourning uh, Shepard when she died at the very beginning of Mass Effect 2, and that she named her drone, Chatika, after Shepard. That's great. Um, so I have not gotten to the Tally romance yet. I'm at the beginning of Mass Effect 2 in this playthrough, but I'm very excited to get to see that plotline. And I'm actually almost doing the opposite of Shayna with this character, where I'm doing mostly Paragon choices and dialogue, but a couple of the big decisions I'm doing Renegade, like the Council did not survive at the end of Mass Effect 1. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was more opinionated than I meant for it to be. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm you need the council. <laughs> because I heard that just people on the Citadel are more snarky to you as you go through, and I was curious to experience that, so we'll see. Oh, hey, it's me. Oh, uh, look at him. <laughs> are you okay? Yes. Um, so, as you can see with the scars, that Fenris Shepherd is very renegade. And I named him Fenris because the game didn't stop me from doing it. <laughs> uh, no, I am the worst person in video games ever because I can do it and there's no actual consequences to being a terrible person. Uh, he was very, very much a renegade. And in three, I romanced Steve because Steve is hot. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know that about Fenris. That's great. Oh, yes. So hot and so sad. Yeah. Yes. We but, like him sad. We do, but unlike Dragon Age, I did not try to fix him through magical sex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I, he is like the worst decision maker ever, all renegade, you know, F everybody but Steve, basically. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, well, well, nothing. What? Say it. Not that I just, F everyone it. but Steve seems incorrect since you romanced him. It's a bad joke. Let's move on. <laughs> I mean, that beginning was rocky. They had no ties for a while. And if I could have got away with Garris. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nighttime panel. <laughs> Mandy. Yes. Uh, so I name all of my video game characters after the name that they give you. I know it's weird. But it's because for me then the projection when you're building the character works better. Uh, because they don't even call you by your name the whole time. You're just Shepard, so it's fine. Nobody needs to know the first name. Uh, but I, I try really hard to play a renegade, and then I fail. Um, because they give you experience for doing things that help people. So whether I want it or not, I get Paragon points. And then therefore, regardless of what I say in dialogue, I still am a failed renegade. Uh, I can own it, it's fine. I'll never get those dialogue choices, it's okay. Uh, but I have a very funny experience with Mass Effect because when I started, as mentioned earlier, when I started playing it, uh, I didn't know about the romance factor. <laughs> and so I would talk to all the characters and be like, I just wanna learn about you, let's be friends. <laughs> and then they'd be yeah. like, so, would you like to meet up later? <laughs> and I, I had that moment where I was like, wait, I, this isn't what I wanted. I just wanted to be a friend. Can we just? Uh, so I had a very comedic like play through the very first time because I was never trying to romance anyone. And yet I kept romancing people. And so like, I was like, I just want to save the galaxy. I don't need this complication. <laughs> like, but it, it made it a very interesting play experience because I was just trying to save everything. I didn't want to romance you. Is Mandy Shepard giving anybody else Catherine Janeway? Because I'm feeling very <laughs> Kate Mulgrew with this. Something about that, right? Maybe it's just because I'm deep in a rewatch of Voyager. I don't know. Anyway. You just tried to befriend all the animals, didn't you? I mean, 
How did that go in Mass Effect? <laughs> they don't let you befriend any of the animals yeah. in Mass Effect. <laughs> but yeah, if fish. I could, I would. Yeah, fish. There's, a, there's a dog. It's, yeah, a, it's like a horrible lizard true. dog that could be yeah, like the, the Varian could be pets and they just attack nope. you. <laughs> the Thorian could be like a pet plant <laughs> and it tries to kill you. Like, there's a cow that steals money from you. That's a Mass Effect 1 reference. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> As you can see, my playthrough did not go to my expectations. <laughs> so I have a question looking at your shepherd. Show of hands, whose shepherd had purple hair? Oh, fewer than I would have thought. Same, same. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously cool. mine's right but, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're so silly. <laughs> I hope no one expected a serious panel. <laughs> if you showed up for a serious panel, well, I hate to tell you something. All right, so what do you hope for next? Um, and there's the one screenshot they keep teasing us with. <laughs> <laughs> so all of you, if, you know, in all things being equal and frostbite giving us our wishes, who would you want to return in the next game? Rex. I was just going to say Rex and let us romance him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I feel seen. <laughs> yeah, the sort of like longer lived species, there's like some really interesting stuff that could yeah. happen there in terms of like how far ahead or behind. Mm. Mm. Yeah. True, like all of the Asari and yeah, exactly. things. I mean, I want them to give me all of the characters that they can, because I think part of what I really enjoyed about playing through Mass Effect was that through line of having that recognizable cast. So mm -hmm. while I don't necessarily need to play through that experience again, because I can every day, they put out the Legendary Edition, it's fine. Uh, I think having those little bits that create that connection to the experience you had before are really the things I'm looking for, because mm -hmm. that's what's both uh, comforting and familiar to the context of like, well, if you can see those characters, as you mentioned, like the long lived or something, be like, oh yes. And then that's where you can have those fun little Easter eggs where you're like, I remember that from Mass Effect 2. And we've already seen them, seen them do a good job with that because a lot of the references in Andromeda were, mm. you know, they were references to characters you knew and love from the first game, but they weren't, ah, look at it. It was just, here's a voicemail that happens to be from that character. Mm. I, I really think that the, this is, I really think that the thing in Andromeda that made it harder to connect with that group is that they kind of went from you're meeting them to, oh, we're a family. Yeah. And I think if you go back to Mass Effect 1, there's like a lot of friction between the, the people on the ship. You know, your Earth military, Garrus is an ex-cop, Rex is Rex. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I think I would like to see that like inner party conflict come back mm -hmm. in sort of, in, in, you know, not so much the like directly confronting each other way, but just like these are all very different people from very different backgrounds. Like they don't have to get along right off mm -hmm. the bat. Mm -hmm. um, and, and even they don't have to get along with Shepard or the main character. See, that's ingrained <laughs> in me. Oh, yeah. But um, I think like Jal in Andromeda, one of the reasons why he's kind of my favorite character in that game is that he looks at you with suspicion at first and you kind of have to earn his trust. Um, and that, that's a thing about like sci-fi that I really like, is like you meet someone from a completely different culture, how can we come together and understand one another? Yeah. I, I want Zaid back. Oh, sure, <laughs> murder grandpa. And I want yeah. him romanceable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, in addition to Rex, I think I would love to see like maybe some, I don't, we don't know when this is gonna be set, right? But like presuming it's, a little ways down the road. I would love to see some descendants of some of the characters that we've lost in the mm. trilogy. Mm. Um, I don't know that Morden, well, I guess also not everyone likes was Morden, but uh, I don't know that, that he necessarily had any progeny, but like maybe, oh, I'm blanking on his name now, the um, assassin who, uh, thank, thank you, me. yes, his son, uh, or, or, or even further down the line than that, but some, someone that is new and fresh and exciting, because I think we all deserve that yes. in the fourth game in the, in the series, right? Or fifth, depending on how you're counting. But with that same kind of, I actually didn't mean to, for that to be quite so shady to Andromeda. <laughs> I enjoyed wow. my playthrough of Andromeda just fine. Shall, um, we remind, shall we tell people what you named her? I don't remember. Oh, oh no, that was Furwick. Yeah, no, mine was Storm. 
Oh no, I thought it was Richard, AKA. Oh God. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'd like some descendants of dead NPCs. <laughs> oh my God. That's so, a statement. What? <laughs> That's a statement. I would like the descendants of dead NPCs. <laughs> Slightly different. I mean, I guess we could have important. some descendants of live ones too, but, but that was my thought about because the longer live races, that would be really interesting. And then also to see how, you know, particularly if they, like if there is someone from the main trilogy, uh, Rex or whatever, and then the family member of someone else and how those interactions go speaking to like not trusting each other immediately or having preconceived notions about meeting someone in sci-fi, that could be really interesting. Um, so conversely, let's just be let's be uh, renegades for a moment. <laughs> Anyone you don't want to see ever again? That what did I say about call and response? <laughs> <laughs> Who? That hit me particularly hard. <laughs> I mean, look. Uh, the the thing that I never want to see again is an exclusively heterosexual Mass Effect character. Yes. yes. I love that. I, I don't ever want to go through the like rising hope and then <laughs> crashing down disappointment of Jack. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jack. I just like, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we were in a different place kind of culturally. Uh, I think we've moved kind of beyond the need for exclusively heterosexual characters in any game. Heck yeah. Frankly. Make all your characters gay, y'all. We, well, and we talked, we talked about that, right? So the beginning of my video, right, is why we want a poly ship. And we've talked a lot about, like, you know, what it would mean on a bunch of different levels, right? What it would mean on a design level and a writing level to have all of those possibilities mapped out within the narrative, but also what it means for the story and for people playing. I love that. I, yeah, I love that. That's such a good, a good answer for that question. I'm going to say something, and we're going to see how you all react. <laughs> I'd be okay if Caden just like is not involved at all. Did you say Caden? Yes, I, I chose was Ashley. Of, okay. of course, I'm I fine chose with that. Ashley. Well, yeah, but I chose Ashley, and so like for me, I was like, I don't need you in my storytelling at all. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Bleached white flour is foundational to many recipes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Many people enjoy vanilla. At least vanilla comes in a brown bottle. And so I love Caden Alenko. I love that man. He is so sad. <laughs> That's true. That's true. He is so sad, and he he doesn't expect you to solve his problems. He's he's beautiful, and I and I'm still in love with Cartho Nasty, and I'm so sorry. That's no. Listen, you know what? That is a good point, though. He doesn't expect you to solve his problems. That's a good point because a lot of them really just onto you with but, that. So. <laughs> But he definitely probably did super die in Mass Effect 3. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it is Jacob, and I'm blanking on the guy from Andromeda. Isaac. No. No. The black no. dude. Liam, yeah. thank you. Which is very sad, because I like Liam O'Brien a lot. I don't like that <laughs> Liam. No, and my main reason is because it was very clear that nobody black was in that writer's room when they wrote this man. Mm. Well, the, yeah, can, we, can we talk about what happens with Jacob? Like, you mean how I get to slap the absolute taste out of his mouth? <laughs> I, was like, I was like genuinely shocked. that like, I'm not. Like, like the first like main black male character in this series ends up being like kind of a deadbeat dad, like Jesus. So spoiler, and this is my one moment of being real salty about a series I love. <laughs> Jacob, depending on what you do, you can romance him or not. Mm -hmm. I forget where, you run into him again in three and if you either romanced him and broke up or whatever you did, he basically tells you he knocked up a serum as scientist is like, oops, sorry. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, excuse me? I forgot all of that. And if you're a femship, you have the option to slap him. 
didn't know that. If you pay for the Citadel DLC. I will, if what, someone I'll wants this that. experience, find me, I will PayPal you. <laughs> so you can have this moment. But it is, in, it is an issue that is endemic to the games industry where you have characters of color, especially black characters, black men, written very much by not black people. Mm. And that is a stereotype about black men. And to see that played out in a AAA studio game and go, really? Yeah. This is what you try to do? At least with Liam, he had his parents, they loved him, but he was still a cop, he was still useless. And at the end, I wanted to punt him out of an airlock <laughs> and leave him at whatever puzzle-y, whatever the thing was, because I played, I played Andromeda once. I, the tentacle arm things that came out when you solved the puzzles, I just wanted to give him to one of them <laughs> and go, here, can I give you a human sacrifice in this trying time? And I hate saying that about black characters, because surprise, only black person on the panel. I would like to like the black characters in this game, but oh well. Before we run out of time and start yelling though, uh, quickly, a yes, no. Do you still love Mass Effect after the Mass Effect 3 ending <laughs> and Andromeda and the way it was ill-received, yes or no? Yes. 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 Oh yeah. What? Oh yeah. Okay, just checking. Yes, yeah. Um, and then before we open it for Q&A, our last thing, and uh, this will be a rapid fire, so we have time for a Q&A. If you could give one tip to someone just now discovering the Mass Effect universe, be they someone in the audience watching at home or is watching this later, what would it be? Please play the Legendary Edition just so that you don't have to deal with the elevator in Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> That's good like, advice. Like, just quality of life improvements. Please play that edition if you're going to start from the beginning. If you decide that Mass Effect 1 is like still too dated for you and you're gonna start, start with two, make sure that you get a world state mm -hmm. that has Rex alive, specifically because if you start Mass Effect 2 with no Mass Effect 1 save, he is dead. And that mm -hmm. really takes a lot of choices away from you, so. Yeah. Um, don't discuss your Mass Effect playthrough on Tumblr the first time you play it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would have to, so if you are the type of person who is not going to replay them, right, because that's, that's a thing, um, then I would say, you know, maybe talk to your friends about what you're thinking for romances and decisions, because if you're really only going to see one, I am the type of person who would be very disappointed if that was my only playthrough and I didn't get to see the cool thing that my friend told me about. But conversely, if you're the type that has any thought that you might play it ever again, do not get a, if you can manage it, don't be spoiled about anything. Because seeing all of this stuff for the first time is so, so fun and we wanna tell people about it, but letting them get it for the first time is amazing. Which means don't go into streams and backseat it. <laughs> Someone's streaming it. I would say be prepared that if you choose a dialogue option, what Shepherd's, comes out of Shepard's mouth might not be what you expect. Just, <laughs> Be prepared for that. So good, yes. <laughs> this is I'm, true. I did love the, like, you read it and you're like, yes, that's exactly what I want to say. And it's more, like, tonally what they're going to say. And not, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, and not always the same words. And I'd be like, oh, I was expecting that to be worse. Or, ooh, I was expecting that to be better. <laughs> uh, play Mass Effect Andromeda. Play it. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. 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 I agree. It's a good game. It, it's, it's a good game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying don't play it. I was just okay. very disappointed <laughs> in some things. Yeah. All right. We have 17 minutes or 15 if we keep it for two minutes for outros. How are we doing Q&A? Is someone walking around with a mic or is there a mic in the room? The mic here. And okay. Do we want to put it here in this aisle? Is that cool? Great. All right. So mic is incoming. Please line up. Have a question. As you can see on the screen somewhere, because I can't see the screen, um, and it can be fun, it can be silly, it does not have to be a serious question, uh, but also please speak clearly so we can hear you and we'll try to repeat it back, especially since it is being streamed. Um, and I will say this, keep your mask on. I love your outfit. Thank you. <laughs> um, my question is, do you remember the 
like moment you fell for the game? Because I remember my very first moment was when Shepard's walking in Mass Effect 1 and she's like pushing people yeah. out the way. That was when Couldn't I knew I would love the game. So do you have that for yourselves? Yeah, so uh, if we, uh, while you all are moving to uh, the line or, or taking off, and, and that's cool, thanks y'all. Uh, let's do keep it down though, because we, we do have a panel still going on. Uh, so the question was, did you have a moment? Is there a moment in the game, a scene or a decision or a moment that you really fell in love with it? When the Normandy goes by Jupiter in the opening, that was it's time. a really good opening. Yeah. So yeah, that moment. When you're Shepard and you walk over and you like get to take it and it's now your ship. Mm. And the, just the departure sequence. Mm. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, I don't need anything else in this moment. This is my ship now. I feel like most of mine were, they were just like cool game moments. My like moment was the first time I hung up on the council. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, I, you do the first mission and they're like, oh, do you want to talk to the council? And I was like, okay. And then as I'm talking to them, I'm like, why am I talking to them? There's nothing valuable happening in this exchange. Like they got my report. I don't know why we're having a conversation. And they gave you the option to just disconnect. I was like, yeah, okay. And <laughs> Amazing. When Saren kills Nihilus, I started to like the characters like, okay, he's gonna be like the mentor throughout the series. Oh, now I want revenge. Uh, mine was actually also the, the Jupiter moment, so I will say this was not the moment I fell in love, but another moment that comes to mind immediately of just being like, oh, these games are so good, um, is the group shot at, towards the end of the suicide mission, if you manage to keep everyone, where they're all above mm -hmm. and you're sort of running and they're firing and trying to give you cover. Just such a beautiful image, uh, particularly if you have everyone still with you. Awesome, thank you. Hello. So my question is, was there any member of the squad you wish the trilogy devoted more exposition to? Ooh. Zaid. Sure. Um. I, I really was interested in learning more about Shiala, the Asari who got cloned by the Thorian. I know that this is, but like, she turned green and they like had mind powers and I just like, tell me more about that. That's, yeah. that seems kind of wild. Trying to think all the way back to everybody, anybody? I mean, the Geth. I'll, I'll always eat up more Geth sure. lore, more. I, going through Legion's sequence in Mass Effect 3, where you see the little clips from the Morning War, like, I'm getting chills kind of thinking about it. And like, I would, I would love just, just, I love both of those groups, the Geth and the Quarian, so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's, it, rather than like specific characters, it was that those parts of the world building that they reference throughout where you're like, oh, I would love for you to tell me more about it. But that wasn't integral to the story they were telling in the initial trilogy. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all of it, right? Yeah. 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 And the Hanar, <laughs> that'd be my other answer. Yeah. Oh, the Hanar, yeah. 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 Thank you. Hi. Were there any side characters or um, just NPCs that you wish were added to the crew or even romanceable like Emily Wong or Cal Rieger? Ooh. Cal Rieger is a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who's the one in, in, that's in the creepy DLC? Werner, Conrad? Conrad? Conrad Werner. Werner. I feel like... <laughs> What? In the which creepy DLC? DLC? The creepy one where his brother is like attached to the machine. Oh, oh Overlord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the, the but, is, but Conrad? Uh huh. I don't know. Conrad Werner fascinates me in a weird way. Sure. Oh, that's fun, yeah. More than Mass Effect 3. Let, let him back on the ship. Let him uh, be romanceable. Yeah. Oh, God. Can you imagine romancing him? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Also fans. Um, Anything else? Yeah, I don't think I have a good one for this. Yeah, I don't either. I just, maybe just like a, a Lady Turian. Yeah. Like another one. Oh, like no, you know line. who I want is um, oh, I just, a Shora Agdishlu's Turian character. I want her, I mean, that doesn't make any sense, but I still want her on the team. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, fast questions, I love it. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, first, I felt a lot of catharsis when you're talking about that one person and one that acts like a creepy stalker. Um, oh, yeah. The second thing, my question is, a bunch of my friends and I from the promotional images with the new Mass Effect game have a theory that it has to deal a lot with the Geth, possibly. 
Um, any thoughts? So, do we have thoughts about the fourth game? Yeah. Uh, or, I guess, any possible connections with, guest, with the future guests, since you mentioned you want to know more about the guests? I've also seen those theories, and mm -hmm. they make sense based on the reasons that I've seen put forward. Um, it's interesting because I'm curious which end state they're going to make canon for four, yeah. right? And I think that will very largely decide you know, what the story is, if the Geth are there, what the story about the Geth is, right? Mm -hmm. Because if synthesis is the canon ending, mm -hmm. then the Geth are something very different, right? So. Whatever it is, I expect it to surprise me. <laughs> like, yeah. I have no theories about four. I'm waiting like yeah. everyone else. The, the theory that I've seen thrown around the most is that it will do the like first contact war. Mm. Um, and I think that that makes a lot of sense because then they don't have to deal with your ending state. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, I, I think that's, it's really in, yeah, yeah, kind of like a Halo Reach, like, you know, <laughs> it could be very similar in tone to that, actually. Hmm. Um, it's a really difficult problem that they are facing right now. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, not with Bioware, obviously, but I've been in conversations like that about, like, what do we do? <laughs> How do we solve this? And storytelling is a discipline, and, mm -hmm. like, there are ways that you can kind of take pieces and put them together and see if they work. And the folks at Bioware are very smart. And I think they'll figure it out. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, so I guess this is more of a silly question, but I'm gonna preface with, um, I work in animal welfare. Um, so I love to name um, animals after video game characters. <laughs> so if any of you are in the Boston area and you would like to adopt an animal and you happen to go to the Animal Rescue League of Boston and there is a hamster named what Space is your Hamster. Question? <laughs> um, do you guys have any animals that are named after Mass Effect characters? Oh. And I guess if you don't, what would you name an animal? So I do animal rescue. Yep. I foster cats. And I actually had a litter of kittens that I named Garrus, Rex, Miranda, and Liara. Uh. Yep. I've cycled through the whole mass of And they were just trilogy. they were just great, <laughs> great little cats. I love them so much. I'm gonna start crying. Garrus <laughs> Garrus had like a little kink in his tail. And I was Aww. like, oh, he's got like a little scar, like my space husband. So <laughs> yep. yeah, I love I love doing nerdy shit like that. It's great. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a cat for 21 years, but his name was Genki. But I made, my laptop is, all, is named Fenris, and most of my electronics are named after either Mass Effect or Dragon Age characters. <laughs> uh, I don't have any pets at the moment, but I think if it was a dog, I would probably name them either Garrus or Rex. Rex would amuse me because I'd be like, it's Rex, but with a W. <laughs> uh, and Cat would probably either be Miranda or Liara. I actually have a friend with a cat named Liara, but not because of Mass Effect. Um, so every time I make a joke about it, she doesn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Forget anything else, Rex with a W. Yeah. <laughs> it's dark. So. Uh, right. Thank I, you. We, oh, wait, thank Mandy. You. I do not. Oh. And it would be hard to choose one <laughs> to name. You just have to have an animal for all of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Hi. So I actually have a mechanic question, uh, basically. It is for Mass Effect 4. Do you want to see the return of Paragon Renegade with the three option wheel for dialogue, or would you prefer to see more of a Dragon Age Origins, Andromeda style, uh, no real hard, uh, good, bad morality, but there are more dialogue options? Which one would you prefer? Interesting. I, I love like... the tone indicators, the snarky, intelligent, empathetic indicator, so that I would love more of that rather than Paragon Renegade. I want to preface this by saying this will never ever happen, but <laughs> I think that you limit yourself a lot by having uh, spoken protagonists. Like Dragon Age Origins, you could pretty much have your character say whatever you wanted because they didn't have to get an actor to say all, all of the different mm -hmm. options. Mm -hmm. I would love a Mass Effect with that. I, it's never going to happen, but I think it would be nice. I think it'd be fun. It would solve several problems, including that's not what I picked. <laughs> <laughs> I Oh, that's a good question. I think I, for me, I guess the, having spent the most time playing the core trilogy, the Paragon Renegade feels so much of Mass Effect to me that I think if they weren't gonna choose that sort of um, 
singular one or the other option that I would just want to see how they would evolve it to keep the spirit of that because mm -hmm. I, I do think that plays a little bit into how you go through that journey. Uh, but I don't know that I would go all the way to like the Dragon Age. I think I think the like Dragon Age two option of still my answer. I'm sorry. What was Dragon Age two option? I'm so um, sorry. You no, can... uh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dragon Age two was the cheerful, sarcastic, oh, yes. angry. But uh, but it's like now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think it would fit Mass Effect. So I I would either like Paragon Renegade or just a dialogue wheel, because. I mean, but, who but, knows? But having, because Mandy, you mentioned, you know, you were kind of middle of the road with your choices. I think, I think there are definitely, there's a, a case to be made that like, hey, maybe, maybe sometimes, you know, there could be things that require you to be more balanced rather than going all one way or all the other. Uh, that would be interesting to see. Yeah. yeah. I'm a really bad renegade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate um, it. Hello. Uh, my question is if you guys have a favorite Paragon or Renegade interrupt action for me in the Citadel DLC when um, Shepard goes on that long tirade against Okay, her. we got your question. Uh, what game was the, where was the slap? Is that in the Citadel DLC? Citadel, yeah. Okay, well, that. <laughs> I just learned about it in that. <laughs> um, it's either slapping Jacob, and this is going to make me sound like a terrible, terrible person. I did now. But punching the reporter. <laughs> oh, yes. Punching the reporter. Yes. Uh, kicking that guy out the window and saying, Yeah. Uh, um, what is the council leader that you can shoot's name? That guy. Oh, God. Oh, my guy. God. <laughs> I forgot. He's that on yes. Udina? That was also Udina. a good one. Udina, yes. <laughs> I forget, is there an interrupt, the Volus who takes the red sand? Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah, you just push him over. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's also the one where you bust the gun of the guy who wants to go on the Archangel mission. Yeah. That's a, oh. and that's a, that's a Paragon interrupt. Yeah. And, she, and you do something pretty active. Like I, Could you save him from going off to yeah, die? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I love yeah. that moment. It's great. Mandy? Oh, no, mine was absolutely punching the reporter. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. And I can tell you now, we are probably not going to get through everyone, but we will hang out in the hallway yeah. to get the rest of the questions. So we're going to try to get through a couple more, and then we're going to do our outros. Um, so I know a lot of people uh, go into Mass Effect playthroughs with a predetermined decision that they're going to do all Paragon or all yeah. Renegade. Um, but particularly if you went in uh, with the mindset of wanting to play through Shepard through your own eyes and making the actions that you would, I'm curious what... Um, moral dilemma and question that the game posed hit you the hardest and was most difficult to decide? The genophage. Yeah, that was my instinct too, but interestingly, that one hit me the hardest. I don't know that it was the toughest to decide. Mm. Um, some of the smaller moments I actually think are way harder for like a bunch of reasons, right? Not necessarily because they're all super heavy moral choices, but because you know they're significant, but you don't know how. Right. So those, those for me are the, are the tough ones. Like the genophage makes me cry, but like <laughs> I'm gonna do it every time. <laughs> for I... me, it's weirdly the Rachni queen. Oh, that's a good mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. the, the decision uh, in Mass Effect 2 whether to rewrite or destroy the heretic Geth, um, I think both of those options are pretty terrible. Oh, yeah. Um, and I mm -hmm. feel very strongly that that should be a situation where both of those choices give you renegade points. Because either way, you're really committing genocide. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like most, all of the ones that really hit me were like the really little personal mm -hmm. uh, conversations that happen that are actually not relevant to the story at all, but they do set, I think, the stage for how you're going to play. Mm -hmm. So as an example, very beginning of Mass Effect 1, um, you have the choice to speak to a gentleman that's standing right outside the diplomat's quarters, and it's him saying, my wife was on um, Eden Prime, and they won't give me her body. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. he tells you there's somebody in the office that you can go speak to, and when you go speak to them, they're like, hey, we're learning something from it, so that's why we're not releasing the body. 
And so you can then make multiple choices in the process of those conversations about whether you're either going to push to allow this man to have his husband's body and take her back for funeral or uh, say like for the greater good, we should hold on to it and you can let him down. You can lie to him, you can tell him the truth. And so for me, a lot of those really hard choices were all of those little ones that are about the people you interact with. Because it's a very broad thing to say you're saving the galaxy, we're fighting the reapers, what have you. But the quality of the character that you play is going to be determined by all of those little interactions that are ultimately, I feel, not meaningful in those big decisions. All right, unfortunately we are out of- Thank you very of, much. What? <laughs> Thank you. Unfortunately, out of time, we're going to very quickly outro, and then anyone who's still in line, we will, if you still want, your, want to talk Mass Effect, we'll be outside wherever they shepherd us off to. Ha! I made a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy. Yeah, real quick. Hi, I'm Lady Luck 34 uh, Mandy, and I'm Variety Streamer, so you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, what have you, under that tag. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm Shana Moon. I work in the games industry. I'm actually looking for work, so awesome. if you need a producer. <laughs> Uh, I'm Tanya Cypropteer. I do a lot of things on the internet, uh, stream, etc. But tomorrow I'm doing two more panels. One, another fun panel on we, why can't we finish a game of Skyrim? <laughs> and then, I spoiler, I've never finished a game. <laughs> and then uh, we're actually going to talk about, we're going to do a similar panel, but about God of War and God of War Ragnarok. Shayna's on it, and we have the voice actor for Tyr, Ben Pendergast, Pendergast joining us. Uh, so those two panels are tomorrow at 3 and 5. Hi everybody, I'm Eugenio. Uh, I'm DM Jazzy Hands on the internet, Twitch and Twitter. You can come hang out with me uh, when I stream. I'll be on the Skyrim panel tomorrow and then Sunday I've got a third panel uh, with Tanya and a couple of other folks uh, about uh, being a content creator in this economy. So come check us out uh, in the next couple of days. Thanks for being here, everybody. I'm One Jacob. Uh, my handle is Daspiff everywhere, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Um, you can find me doing a lot of Pokemon, competitive Pokemon, Pokemon challenges, and I also am a professional moderator for safety on Twitch. Right. Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Bye, everybody at home. Being a mayor 